Uh, we even study together during the week. We, we, we pray together during the week. Amen? But these meditations, um, we don't usually study those. We don't, we don't like, determine who's going to do what. You know what I mean? I believe that God has gifted these people and that um, I learned a long time ago because of who they are. I don't have to worry about what's going to be said. Amen? But I love the way that God always brings it around to the message. I love the way that the Holy Spirit's working in each one of our lives. Amen. I was thinking about Daisy's uh, message that says not just to listen to the word and then deceive yourselves. Amen. How many Christians today go to church on Sunday? They maybe meet a Bible study during the week, but they don't pick up their Bible every day. How many Christians today don't pick up their Bible every day and ask God to reveal himself to them? Amen. You know, when I first got saved, that was hard for me to do that. I was encouraged to do that by a really good, uh, close friend of mine that was a deacon in the church. But I had a hard time doing it because every time I did, the Holy Spirit would show me my life. And, it, and, and I didn't want to see that because I was living it and I was okay. I was enjoying myself and everything was the way I wanted it to be. Amen. So it was really hard for me at first because... Like I said, every time. It's the way God works in our life. He has to get past that which is keeping us from Him. Amen? So that He can share Himself with us and we'll listen. And so whenever you decide to get close to the Lord, that's the first thing that happens. Because He reveals yourself to you. Amen? Amen? So a lot of Christians today, they come to church, they say they're Christians, but never pick up their Bibles. If they choose to pick up their Bibles, they only read it for a short time or they read it until it convicts them, until the Holy Spirit speaks to their heart and then they put it down. I did that too, Alex. One time I put it down for a whole month. I was a young Christian and God was just like dealing with me harshly and I just put the Bible all oh, away. I don't want to read that. Amen. I still went to church, but I quit, I quit, I quit listening. See? I quit, I quit accepting, let's put it that way, because I didn't quit listening. I went to church and heard it every week, amen? <coughs> but you can literally deceive yourself into even thinking you're saved if all you do is listen to the Word of God. See, it doesn't change anything. Having knowledge changes nothing until you apply it. Amen? See? And me, I'm a young pastor, and I've had a lot of my pastor friends uh, uh, say things to me about certain things, and and um, and I look at the choices that they make sometimes, and I th and I thank God that the choices I make are made by the little bit that I know. Amen. He's not asking you to know everything. He's asking you to take what you know and let Him work in your life with it. Amen. You get it. I want to read something to you um, to start this morning in Chronicles. I stole it from Brother Paul. He called me with it. He said, I just got done with Chronicles, and the one verse that keeps standing out, and I said, what is it? And he gave it to me, and it went with the message. I go, oh, man, that's everything I was studying this morning. First Chronicles 28, just one verse, verse 9. This is King David talking to Solomon. 28.9, I said? Yeah. Okay, here we go. You guys there? First Chronicles, chapter 28, verse 9, it says, And you, my son, Solomon, acknowledge the God of your father and serve him with a wholehearted devotion and with a willing mind. For the Lord searches every heart and understands every motive behind the thoughts. He seeks him. Oh. If you seek him, you uh, he will he will be found by you. But if you forsake him, he will reject you forever. Amen. My brother said something today. He said that um, he wishes that the, the real percentage of Christians was registered instead of 80% of the United States saying they're Christians. Amen? In reality, probably 10, maybe 15, 18% of 
of the United States truly seek Christ, truly have a devote, wholehearted devotion to Him. Amen. Uh, I would say that number's high. I'm, I'm, I don't know. I would hope that I'm wrong, but I would say that that number's pretty high. Father, we just want to come to you right now, just asking, Father, that um, one of the things that you've been sharing with me, Lord, I want to share with the church is that. Uh, this time is a time of um, wholehearted devotion to you, you might say. it's a, Father, I, I really believe that you've been calling me to bring the church into a quiet time with you. To make this a time where our hearts are open to receive everything that you have for us. Even those things that you show us about ourselves that uh, you've freely delivered us from, but we are choosing to continue to live in, Lord. If that happens this morning, Father, we just ask that you would remove that from our hearts, Lord. Remove it from our lives. Fill us with your presence, Lord. Give us an, a, an obedience to you over it, Lord. Make it possible, Father, for us to have a heart for you, Lord. Lord, to not just see past those things, but to not see those things anymore. To choose the things, Father, that you're revealing to us. Allow us to get into a place with you, Father, where we not only get past those things and have a true uh, obedience to you and forgiveness, Father, but that, uh, Lord, you would have the opportunity to speak to our hearts where we would hear you and that you would share yourselves with us, share yourself with us. We ask that, Lord. We ask that this morning. We ask, Father, that, Lord, I'm just going to stop for just a moment and ask, Lord, I'm going to ask your church in prayer just to surrender yourself. Surrender yourself to Him this morning. <coughs> Lord, forgive each one of us, Father, wherever we're at with You, Lord. Wherever we've done to um, keep ourselves from truly seeking You, Lord. Whatever it is that You're sharing with us right now, Father, we ask forgiveness for that. Lord, we want to be washed in the blood of Jesus, and we want this time to be Your time, where Your church is silent to hear You. And Lord, where we open our hearts and with a wholehearted devotion to receive whatever you have for us, Lord. I just truly ask for that this morning. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 We're in uh, 2 Corinthians. Nine. Six. I want to talk a little bit about this first. I need to share this with you guys. I know you're already there with me, but I still need to put us back into focus of where we're at, okay? This is Paul restoring the church. What I mean by restoring the church is Paul's reminding the Corinthians uh, who have been going through a spiritual battle. He's reminding the Corinthians of when they first got saved. He's reminding them of how they used to act, who they used to be. He's putting them back in the right mindset of what of the, of the life change God gave them. Amen? You know, sometimes we, we become um, Christians that um, uh, are just, we're, all we do is talk about who we, who we think we should be, or, or all we do is tell people what we want to be. Amen? But it's not really who we are. See? Because we forget. The Bible says we forget the height we fell from. Do you remember the day you were saved? You remember that day? To me, that was the most amazing day. Amen? Amen. You, you know, that changed everything about me. Changed my whole life in a moment. In just a moment of time, God revealed to me everything about myself. God revealed to me everything I've done. Every destruction. Huh? You know what he opened my eyes to, Alex? Not just what I've done, but what it's caused. He broke my heart by showing me myself. Amen? Don't tell me you can't remember that day. There had to be such humility. The pride had to be completely gone. There had to be zero stubbornness to receive Christ. Amen? And in order to receive Christ, genuinely receive Christ as your Lord and Savior, all those things had to be taken away. It all had to be washed clean, right? Am I wrong? It all had to be removed. Do you think that the God that we serve would enter a dirty house? 
No. Amen? And I remember being so broken, but so alive. For the first time in my life, I was alive. I was free from all the things he just shared with me. Amen? Because he washed them away. And do you remember that moment? That moment you were in forgiveness? You know what? I never knew what forgiveness was until everything I'd ever done had been taken away. Amen? Do you remember that? Do you remember the freedom from all those things? Listen, I didn't even know I was a slave to most of them until he started sharing them with me. But when he started sharing them with me, I seen how devoted I was to them and how crippling it was to my life. And how he just began to remove all of that emotion, all of those feelings. He began to just set me free. Do you remember? Do you remember the freedom? Wasn't it wonderful? You remember that, Paul? He wants us to live that way every day. That's the life he died to give us. Do you know why most of us fall short of that life? Huh? Because we forget what he did for us. See, we stop spending the time with him to continue to share those things with us. When Jesus washed the disciples' feet, the feet, the feet of the disciples, <laughs> that didn't make sense, did it? When Jesus washed the feet of the disciples, that's what he told us to do for each other, amen? See, he took, Peter said, well, wash my whole body, Lord. He said, your whole body's already clean. See, he just was out in the world, and he got his feet dirty a little bit, and he just needed to cleanse that, Amen? See, you know what causes us to forget? Is we're not spending time with God to have that clean all the time. Amen? And guess what else causes it? When we don't set other people free by giving them the forgiveness we received. See, it's an attitude. We either have the attitude of the world and worldly things, and we treat people like the world treats us. See? Or no matter what the world's doing, no matter what's coming against us, we treat people the way Christ treated us. Amen? See, we forget the height we fell from. We forget the freedom God gave us. See that? We forget how humbling that was, but how wonderful it was. See, we need to live in that humbleness so that we can give that freedom to others. Amen? You want to see that time come, Alex? Huh? Where the rivers are overflowing into all these homes? then you need to share with them what Christ shared with you. You need to free them the way Christ freed you. Amen? And that's what he's saying. It's not about the money. See? Somebody predicted that there was going to be a great famine. And so all the churches got together to, to, to take a, a collection, to send to Israel, amen, to send to Jerusalem, to feed all those that were going to go through a hard time. See? But nobody was thinking about what they were going to give. When, they first, when that first happened, nobody was thinking about what to give. They were excited to give. They were on fire to give. Why? Because of their newfound faith and freedom in Christ Jesus. Amen? And they were excited about that. And they wanted to share that. It had nothing to do with finances. See, but over time, a year had passed. And now Paul's having to ask them to remember the commitment they made. Why? Why is that? Because they allowed the world back in their life. They forgot the height they fell from. So trust me when I tell you this, Paul's encouraging the church to remember the day they were saved. He's encouraging the church to live in Christ Jesus, to seek Him every day. Amen? With an expectation that God's going to share Himself with you. Isn't that a beautiful thing? You know what happens when you expect God to share Himself with you? He not only shares Himself with you, but He gives you a way to share Him with others. Amen? Isn't that crazy? When I really, really study my Word, and, I'm, and listen, not for the knowledge of it, Joan, but I study it so that it can reveal who I am, reveal the changes that God wants to make in me, and I allow Him to make the changes by being obedient to what we read. Amen? Then I'm not deceiving myself anymore. Remember I told you we lie to each other all the time because we live out there a certain way and we come in here and act different? We're just in here deceiving each other because we're not who we say we are when we're out there. Right? But if we're out there living the life Christ died to give us, 
When we come together, we bring Christ in here together. Amen? We don't bring the world in here, something we have to battle, but we bring Jesus in here. You get it? And then we collectively come together as one in this body of Christ. What a wonderful thing it is that, you can, that each one of us can experience God through the power of the Spirit in this place together. Amen? Is he going to teach you something, Alex, that he doesn't share with me? Same Spirit? Same God? You guys there? It says, Remember this. This is 6. 2.9.6. 2 Corinthians 9.6. Remember this. Whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly. And whoever sows generously will also reap generously. Each man should give what he has decided in his heart to give, not reluctantly under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. Amen? 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 God loves a cheerful giver. Amen. You know, when I was a young Christian man, I, I was scared to give something I didn't have. I felt like every dime I earned was, was just enough, you know what I mean, to, to pay our bills and maybe get a little ahead or something, you know? But um, I, the words of a very wise man once told me, Matt... You can't outgive God. You can't outgive God. Amen. I only said that because he's sitting here today. He's back there over there. Amen. You can't outgive God. And you know, my life, when I when I took that into consideration, my life became blessed, but I realized it had nothing to do with the money. The money was just a tool God used to get close to us. Because he knew it was one of the things that took us away from him. Amen. I don't give because I know the church needs it. I don't give because I feel you know, like I'm responsible for something. I don't give for any of those reasons. I give because God gives to me. And God wants my heart, amen? He wants my heart. He wants everything about me. He doesn't, it's not just money. Look at it. It's other things that keep us from being with Him, spending time with Him, getting close to Him. Okay. For some people it is money. You can't serve two gods, money and, and God. Amen? You'll love the one and hate the other, despise the one and follow the other. You can't serve two gods. Watch what it says. And God is able to make all grace abound to you so that in all things... See, he went from talking about the money they were supposed to give to the blessing that's going to come because they gave it righteously. You get it? Watch what he says. For God loves a cheerful giver, and God is able to make all grace abound to you, so that in all things, at all times, having all that you need, you will abound in every good work as it is written. Amen? You know what happens when we are obedient to God? You know what happens when we're obedient to God? He gives us he gives us more than we need. He gives us more than we need. Amen? You ever see people that, that uh, already have more than other people, right? But they're always acting like they're starving? Huh? No lie. I've been, <laughs> look, at, I know I've said it before, but I've been places where, where there's a potluck going on, right? And they pile the food as high as they can get on the plate. I don't even know how they can balance it. <laughs> I don't know how they can balance it, but they get it going. <laughs> right? They eat the whole thing, and then they're back in line before some people had got there first, the first time. Some people haven't even been up there yet. I've seen it happen. I've seen it over and over again. And I pray for those people for understanding because they're always going to be hungry. They're always going to be hungry. You get it? They're always going to be chasing something they shouldn't be chasing and never, ever having enough of it. You get it? But when we surrender ourselves to the Lord, man, the grace that abounds. And all the resources come. And He starts to open our minds and hearts to what He's called us to. And He shows us how to get it done. Amen? He's got something for each one of us. And most of us are chasing the plate of food 
And we're always hungry and we miss everything He has for us. And He's telling them, don't be those people. Don't be those people, amen? And God is able to make all grace abound to you so that in all things, at all times, having all you need, you will, you will abound in every good work as it is written. He has scattered abroad His gifts to the poor. Amen? His righteousness endures forever. Now he now that poor right there, you guys, I want to explain that to you. I'm sorry, I don't want to get ahead of myself. That's not being poor financially. Okay? That's being poor in the little S spirit, so that the big S spirit can give you life and all the things you need. Amen? That's the height we fell from. Do you remember? Paul, if I would have had any pride, any stubbornness, any anger towards somebody else, any, any, anything, then I don't think that I would have been forgiven and had Christ come into my heart. I literally had to surrender all in order to receive Him. Amen? And in surrendering all, I became like Him. You see it? So in becoming like Him, everything that was wrong was removed that I might choose to live in Him and be in Him and have eternal life in Him. Amen? See, we need to choose that every day. We need to choose to be poor in the world, poor in the spirit of the world. We need to choose to be rich in God. We just read a couple of chapters ago that Paul became poor that many might be rich. Amen? And we read last week or the week before, I think it was, where Jesus had everything in heaven with the Father, came to live on this earth and became poor that we might become rich and have eternal life in His kingdom. Amen? Amen. You see the beauty of what we're talking about? He's reminding them of when they were saved. He's reminding them of that first love. That first love they've been forsaking. Amen? You know, I talk like this and everybody's getting it. But at the same time, they're grieving it. I see grief. Why do we grieve it? It's what we should embrace. Just like the day we embraced Christ. Why do we grieve it? Am I seeing something wrong or am I seeing that? I think they're looking at what they might miss if they truly surrendered to Christ again. And guess what? The thing that you're grieving that you think you might miss is the very thing keeping you from having anything special in Christ. Amen? Having the truth of a life that's abundant in Him. Now He who supplies seed to the sower and bread for food, here's what He's saying. Listen to this. He will not only meet your physical needs, but He will meet your spiritual needs. And let me tell you something, flesh and blood can't inherit the kingdom of God. Okay? We serve a God of spirit and truth, and He wants worshipers who will worship Him in spirit and truth. So yeah, he, we're here on this earth. Jesus said, I'm not asking you to take them out of the world, I'm asking you to protect them while they're in the world. Amen? He's going to provide our physical needs. But how much more important is the spiritual need that He's going to meet? Watch what it says. He who supplies seed to the sower and bread for food will also supply and increase, and increase your store of seed and will enlarge the harvest of your righteousness. He's talking about your spiritual walk. Amen? Isn't that beautiful? Go to Luke really quick. I want to explain this better. I don't remember where I put my marker there. Wherever this thing pops out. There we go. <laughs> it, the title is under Judging Others. Luke 6, 37. Let's listen to what Jesus has to say about what I'm talking about this morning. Amen? You guys, you guys there? Luke 6, 37. <coughs> 
You know what I used to tell people all the time? If I didn't judge people, they wouldn't see me. I would be invisible. Because what, how you judge, you're measured to the same judgment. You understand? But everybody in the world judges everybody for everything. So if I chose not to judge, they wouldn't see me. There'd be nothing to measure. Right? That's what I used to tell people. Isn't that cool? Amen. <laughs> I don't know. Let's just read it. Do not judge and you will not be judged. Amen? Do not judge and you will not be judged. That doesn't happen immediately because everybody judges. But when a person gets to know who you are, amen, then the judgment they make will be righteous about you if you're a child of God. I told you guys last week, I want to be the type of man that you already know the answer to your question before you ask me because you know who I am. Amen? Get it? And here's something else about judging like this. We see what the world sees when we make a judgment. That's very worldly. Okay? But when we're walking in Christ, and not only are we receiving for us what He wants for our life, amen? But He starts to show us what He wants for the life of others. So we no longer see what the world sees, but especially like if you have a major problem with somebody, pray for them every day. You pray and spend time in Christ for that person every day. And God's going to show you a new person. Your anger's going to leave. Any kind of, um, yeah, right? He's going to change your heart towards that person. And he's going to start to show you that person the way Jesus sees the person. Sadly enough, we see what the person, we see, all we see is what the person's doing, right? We see the outcome of what God wants to change. We don't see what needs to be changed. And so we judge them by that. See, we're acting just like the world in the world. We need to see what God wants to do with that life, amen? You know how I see that, Eddie? You know how I see it? I remember who I used to be and who I am today. I had a young man in Bible study this week tell me that I had such a great testimony because of who I was and what God's done in my life. And you know what I told the young man? You now have the same testimony. Because I love who you've become. He, he wasn't even seeing himself. He was still looking at somebody else who helped to lead to him to Christ. Amen? But I, I talk nothing but good about him, and I praise him to everybody because I'm so proud of the life he has now. Instead of the life. Ange, what are you going to do with the rest of your life now that you're not going to die young? Because you're Ant. Do you know, you know I worked with a lot of gangsters when I was in Colton. You know what they all told me? You know what they all told me? They even had things written on their arms like the, the bad word with life and everything. You know what they all told me? Now that we're saved, what are we going to do? Because they thought they'd all be dead by the time they were 25. So what do you do with the rest of your life now? One of them just told me recently they fear the rest of their life because they didn't think they would be here. Huh? Isn't that amazing? See, we, don't, we, can't, we shouldn't see what they're doing. We should see the possibility. You get it? And it's only going to happen if we have that height still and we know how we were forgiven and we give that forgiveness. Amen? Did it blow your mind, Ange, that somebody loved you and wanted to forgive you before you even knew who they were? That's what kept you coming. That's what brought you into this life. Amen? And what a great life it is. See that? It's so wonderful. Ready, watch. Have I read any of this to you? Oh, we're talking about judgment. Mm -hmm. Do not condemn. This one's beautiful. Let me tell you guys what Jesus said. Can I? I'm trying to go fast here. I'm sorry. Here we go. You ready? Jesus didn't come into the world to condemn the world. He came into the world to save the world. Do you know why he didn't come to condemn it? Because it was already condemned. This world is lost and dying. And its only outcome without Christ is death. It already stands condemned. He didn't come to condemn the world. He came to save the world. Amen? And you know what he's telling us? Huh? Look what it says. 
He's telling us. Is he saying him anymore? No. In this passage of Scripture, he's talking to us, okay? Do not condemn, and you will not be condemned. Amen? See, Jesus didn't come to condemn you. He came to save you, and now he wants to work in and through you to share with others they can have life so they don't fall under condemnation because there is no condemnation in Christ. Let me, let me tell you what that really means, can I? If you're living like the world and you're judging others and condemning them, are you in Christ? Right? But if you're choosing to seek Him every day and allow His Spirit not just to reveal to you who you are, but who you could be in Him because He's sharing Himself with you, and you go into the world to share Him with others without condemning them, amen? That's being in Christ. There is no condemnation in Christ. So if I'm in Christ and I condemn somebody, I'm not in Christ. I'm coming to them in the world. Treating them just like the world would treat them. This is Jesus talking about what we're talking about, what Paul was trying to reveal to the Corinthian church. Amen? Listen, watch what he says. Do not condemn, and you will not be condemned. Listen, you ready? Forgive and you will be forgiven. He wants us to set people free the way we were set free. And He wants us to remain free and live in His freedom by giving that freedom to others. Amen? What's the quickest way to resolve an argument? Just to give somebody freedom. To forgive them, ask for forgiveness, just to let it go and love them. Amen? Amen? How many people today are not in a relationship with their family? Not in a relationship with their friends, the people they love because they're holding something. Right? You want to be free? You need to set them free. And what, why live in that? Now that you've experienced the freedom God gives. Amen? Alex, you accepted the freedom freely. And you, you're... Everything about you is different. You're just so full of love and, 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 and just everything God has poured upon you. Amen? With that feeling you have, don't you want somebody else to have that? Amen? Give and it will be given to you a good measure. Press down and shaken together and running over with will be poured into your lap, for with the measure you use, it will be measured to you. There's people in my life today that would not be in my life today if I treated them the way they treated me. Because of what Christ did in me. Because if I treated them the way I was treated, we wouldn't know each other today. We wouldn't spend time with each other today. We wouldn't love each other today the way we love each other. Christ brought that about. Amen? For with the measure... Okay, listen to... Are you ready for 39? Are you ready for this? I can't believe it gets better, but it gets better. He also went on to... He also went... He also told them this parable. Can a blind man lead a blind man? You know what he's saying? Can somebody in the world lead somebody in the world? No, guess what will happen? You're both going to fall off a cliff into a pit. Guess what the name of the pit is? Amen? Watch this. Uh, Jesus is awesome. You know what he's doing? The same thing the Holy Spirit does to us. He's sharing this in such a way that the people are being convicted in their hearts about what they're doing. He's opening them up to see the full truth. Amen? There might be somebody here today, I hope not now that we've gotten past it, but there might have been. Amen? Just like in that day. Jesus was speaking and they were hardening their hearts. They're getting more and more angry. See that? And he just keeps exposing them to themselves over and over and over again. See that? Why? Because he wanted them to see themselves. 
so they could get past themselves. Hey, man, watch what he says. <laughs> He's so amazing. Can a blind man lead a, a blind man? Will they not both fall into the pit? A student is not above his teacher. You know what he's saying here? Some people think they're above God. They think they're above God. They think that their wisdom is all the wisdom they need and they're okay and they're righteous. And I'm talking about in the church. Watch what he says. A student is not above his teacher, but everyone who is, who is fully trained will be like his teacher. Amen? He's saying, let the Holy Spirit convict your heart and then let the Holy Spirit reveal who he is to you so that you can be like him. Don't just merely hear the word and not apply it to your life. Amen? Man, Jesus is beautiful, isn't he? Why do you look at the speck of sawdust in your brother's eye? All we do is just keep pushing each other away, pushing each other away, pushing each other away, pushing each other away. Because we can't see clear enough to get the speck out of your eye because we haven't removed the beam from our own yet. We haven't spent time with God yet. We haven't let Him change our hearts yet. How am I supposed to tell you about Jesus if I haven't experienced him? How am I supposed to make a difference in your life if God hasn't made a difference in mine? How am I supposed to make a difference in your life if I keep judging you the way that the world judges you? If I condemn your actions before you have a chance to answer to them? Most of us won't talk to other people because of what we see. And we pick and choose who we're going to talk to. And we make wrong choices doing that. That's not where God wants us. That's where the enemy wants us. It's the truth. Why do, you, why do you look at the speck of sawdust in your brother's eye and pay no attention to the plank in your own eye? The only way you're going to see that is if you spend time with God and He reveals it. Amen? How can you say to your brother, Brother, let me take the speck out of your eye when you yourself fell to see the plank in your own eye? You hypocrites. Hypocrite. First take the plank out of your eye, and then you will see clearly to remove the speck from your brother's eye. Amen? Amen. You're not going to do it in the world. You're going to do it in Christ. You're going to do it by the power of the Spirit. Amen? Go back to Corinthians. Let's close this up. 2 Corinthians 9. I think we're in verse 12, yeah? Oh, let me back up to 11. I don't think we did 11. Okay, you guys there in 11? Now this again, he's talking about using the money to get to the hearts of the people. He's talking about doing what God called them to do so that the lives of the people can change. Amen? Watch what, And not just their life, but the Corinthians' life. The people that that's going to be given to and the people that are going to hear about it. Amen? It's, 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 a, it's an attitude adjustment that needs to take place in our hearts. Amen? Watch what he says. 11 says, You will be made rich in every way. Is that talking about money? You will be made rich. You will be made like Christ in every way so that you can be generous on every occasion and through us your generosity will result in thanksgiving to God. Amen? See, can you imagine... Remember last week I told you about how some people came to us and, and their daughter was hungry in San Bernardino and a few families got stuff out of their cabinets because we didn't have a lot of money and we took it to them. And then like a couple weeks later, some guy shows up at my house and everything I'm putting away that he gave us, that he said God put on his heart to take out of his cabinets food he thought we would eat and brought it to my house. 
And as me and Kathy were putting it away, it was the same thing God put on our heart to give to the lady in San Bernardino. What? Isn't that amazing? And let me tell you guys something, can I? It had nothing to do with the food. It had nothing to do with money. In my heart, I hope that that girl out there rejoiced in that food when she was eating it. Rejoiced and praised God because she had food on her table. Amen? But me and my wife, we rejoiced in God for the ability to give it. And then we got to rejoice in God again when it was given back. It was life-changing. Amen? It was life-changing. This service that you perform is not only supplying the needs of God's people, but it is also overflowing into many expressions of thanks to God. Amen? There it is right there. It just keeps giving. It just keeps giving. Because of the service by which you have proved yourselves, men will praise God for the obedience that comes that accompanies your confession of the gospel of Christ and for your generous generosity in sharing with them and with everyone else. Amen? Don't you get it? It has nothing to do with the money. It has everything to do with the heart, your heart, God's heart living in you. Amen? That's what you're sharing. That's what people are receiving. That's what changes lives. Watch. And in their prayers for you, their hearts will go out to you because of the surpassing grace of God has given you. Thanks be to God for His indescribable gift. Amen? Amen? Amen. Isn't that wonderful? You know... How beautiful are the feet of those who bring the good news. Amen? Amen? Father, we just want to come to you today, Lord, just asking, Father, your blessing. I would hope, Lord, that... I would hope, Lord, that your word... I would hope, Lord, that your word gave life today. Lord, I know I can't do it justice, but I know, Father, that where your spirit is, there's freedom. Thanks, Daisy, for that this morning. Where your spirit is, there's freedom, Lord. And I would hope that today we experience your, your spirit in that freedom. I hope today that we experienced you, Lord, and that your word became alive to us and that there was something that was life-changing about, a, about your word that would, would just allow us, Father, to truly be forgiven, to truly accept that forgiveness, to truly accept, um, Lord, even the harshness that comes from you sometimes so that we could, like that song we sang in Sunday school, uh, Refiner's Fire, My Heart's One Desire. Wow, can you imagine? We're desiring to be uh, melted down and the sin being skimmed off of our life that we might become more pure, pure gold.